Greetings, the philosophical basics of dot com of utilitarianism branch. We'll give you the full introduction on it, the criticisms, the history and all that. And this is the final what it really means on the philosophical side of it. OK, the introduction. Utilitarianism is the idea of the moral worth of an action is solely determined by the con uh, contribution to the overall utility and maximize happiness or pleasure as summon among all people. It is then the total utility of individuals, which is important here. The greatest happiness for the greatest number of people and the utility after which is the doctrine is named is a measure in economics of the relative satisfaction from a desirability of the consumption of goods. Utilitarianism can thus be described as a quantitative and redonistic approach to ethics. Utilitarianism starts from the basis that pleasure and happiness are intri intrinsically valued that that pain and suffer intrinsically disvaluable and that anything that anything else has value only in and, and in cause of happiness of preventing suffering suffering and instrumental or as it means to an end this focus of happiness of pleasure as the ultimate end of the moral decisions makes it the type of hedonism and is sometimes known as hedonistic utilitarianism it yeah, has intrinsic intrinsic value and all that stuff. Yeah. Utilitarianism supports equality by e equal consideration of interests and they reject any arbitrary distinctions as to who is worthy concern, who is not to any discrimination between individuals. However, it does accept the idea of declining, declining discrimination, uh, declining the marginal utility. Yeah. Declining marginal utility, which recognize that the same thing furthers the interests of well-off individual to a lesser degree than it would be the interests of the less well-off individual. It is a form of consequentialism. I made a re recent video on that, a uh, couple of months, I think last month and the immoral worth of e more worth of action is determined by the outcome or consequence the end of justify the means you hear this in parenthesis i will read this again and the moral worth of an action determined by its outcome or consequence the ends of justify the means as opposed to deontology which d disregards the consequence performing an act when determined in its moral worth and the virtual ethics, which focus on character rather than the rules or consequence. And this is the introduction of it. Now we get into the history of utilitarianism. The origins of utilitarianism are often traced back to Epicureanism of followers of the Greek philosopher Epicurus. Epicureanism, yeah. I'll read that again. The origins of utilitarianism are often traced by to the Epicureanism of the followers of the Greek philosopher Epicurus. It can be argued that David Hume, Edmund Burke were proto utilitarians. But as a specific school of thought, generally credited to the English philosopher Jeremy Bentham, and Bentham found pain and pleasure to be only intrinsic intrinsic values in the world. This is derived the rule of utility. That is that the good is whatever brings the greatness, the greatest happiness to the greatest number of people. Bethlehem himself, however, attributed to the origins of the theory to Josh Priestley, 1733 to 1804, the English scientist, theologian, founder of the utilitarian, I mean, unitarianism, they call it unitarianism in England, but it's known as utilitarianism. OK, so we got Bethlehem's foremost proponent was James Mill, 1773, uh, 1836, and his son, John Stuart Mill, known as Jim Mill. His father, Jim, and his son, John, who was educated from a young age, according to Bethlehem's principles in his famous 1861 short work. Utilitarianism, John Stuart Mill, both named 
movement and refine Bethlehem's principles, Mill argued that the cultural, intellectual, and spiritual pleasures are greater value than were physically physical pleasure, as valued by a con competent judge, which according to Mill is anyone has experienced both lower pleasures and the higher. In an essay of On Liberty of the Works, Mill argued utilitarianism requires that any political arrangements satisfies the liberty of principle or harm principle, according to which only purpose for which can be rightfully excised over others in cornerstone. I mean, over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm. That's what they say in so many words. I did most of the videos you can watch on utilitarianism. Yeah, harm principle according to only purpose which power can be rightfully experienced exercise over any member okay and community against his will but prevent harm to others in the cornerstone of the principles of liberalism and libertarianism let's read this again because this is this is what the old liberty was saying the essay and when you read this parentheses why i just read is according to which only purpose which power can rightfully be exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others cornerstone of the principles of liberalism and lib uh, and libertarianism some marxist philosophers have also used these principles as arguments for socialism but the classic utilitarianism of betham and mill influenced many moral philosophers and the development of many different types of consequentialism. I just recently made a video on that. And here's the criticism of utilitarianism. Criticism, the criticisms of utilitarianism. It has been argued that the measuring and comparing happiness among different people is impossible, not only in practice, but in principle. Defenders argued that the same problem is successful overcome in everyday life. That roughly estimates are usually sufficient Another dilemma of utilitarianism is that the pleasure of a sadist should have the same importance as the pleasure of an altruist. Although the proponents have con uh, countered, the sadists are relatively few, so they are effectively influenced would be a minimal, and that the hurt of suffered by others will be counterbalanced. Any pleasure registered by the sadist, furthermore, the sadist's pleasure is superficial and temporary. Thus, it is a detrimental to the sadist's long-term well-being. Another argument is that sometimes a long time is needed to weigh with all the evidence and reach a defined conclusion on the relative cost and the benefits of an action. Utilitarians admit to a certain knowledge of the consequences and sometimes impossible, but argue the best estimates of consequences or predictions based on the past are usually sufficient a very specific argument against utilitarianism has been put forth on the grounds that determine that, uh, that determinism is either true or false if this is true then we have no real choice over our actions if it's false then the consequences of our actions are unpredictable not least because they will they will depend on the actions of others whom we can predict Utilitarianism has been criticized for only looking at the results of the actions, not at a desires or intentions which motivate them, which many people are considered important. Thus, an action intended to cause harm, but in it advertently causes good results, would be judged equally to the result of an action done with good intentions. Utilitarianism may argue the justifications of slavery, torture, or mass murder would require unrealistically large benefits and outweigh to direct extreme suffering to to be victims, as well as taking into consideration of indirect impact of social acceptance of in inhumane policies. Generally, anxiety, fear might increase for all if humans are commonly ignored. Other critics have been uh, objections to the following to the right and wrong, the economy, dichotomy, implicit in utilitarianism, whether whether a, whereby a good or charitable donation may be branded as a wrong action. If there was an alternative donation to more efficient uh, 
uh, charity. Utilitarianism does does uh, does take an account of the fact that human nature is dynamic and changing. So the concept of a single utility for all humans is one dimensional, not useful. But utilitarians have no ultimate justification for primarily value and pleasure other than the ta the tautological on that this way it should be. So consequentialists consider that although happiness as as important consequence other than consequence such as justice or equality should be also valued taken into consideration regardless of whether they increase happiness or not the types of utilitarianism here we go the act of utilitarianism or case utilitarianism states that when we face a choice we must first consider the likely consequences of potential actions that particular a uh, particular case from that choose to do what we believe and generate the more the most overall happiness most overall happiness active utilitarians may follow the certain rules of the thumb the, the the heuristics to save time or cost although if the consequences can be calculated relatively clearly exactly easily then such rules of a thumb can be ignored and the choice is treated on a case by case basis. And here's rule utilitarianism. And I actually got, um, let's see. Uh, let's see, I got average. Oh, I got rule right here on paper. Let's read rule right here. It states that when faced with choice, we must look at the potential rules of action to determine whether the generalized, generalized rule produce more happiness and then uh, then otherwise, if it were to be consistently followed, thus an action only be carried out if if it if it follows a rule that morally should be followed at times. Rule utilitarians may agree that there are some general exceptions of the rules that allow the breaking of the rules. If this increased happiness, exception of self-defense to overcome the general rule never to kill a human, although critics argue that this is logically just reduced the act of utilitarianism and i got one right here and that says as a form of utilitarianism says an action is right as it confirms to the rule that leads the greatest good the greatest good or that of the rightness or wrongness particularly action is function of the rule of its intents yeah i got that written down that is rule utilitarianism and yeah. The two level utilitarianism states that normally we should be intuitive, morally thinking in the form of rule utilitarianism because it usually maximizes happiness. However, there are some times that we must ascend a higher critical level of reflection in order to decide what to do. Must to think as an act of utilitarian would. This method is based on the view that an act of utilitarianism may preferably in theory. Usually it's too difficult to perfectly predict consequences. So we require more guidelines or rules in the day of life. Day, day to day life. OK, that is two level utilitarianism. And here's another one. Motive utilitarianism states that our initial moral task to inculcated motives within ourselves by the means of teaching and re and repetition that will be that will be generally useful across the spectrum across situations we are likely to encounter rather than hypothetical examples which are unlikely to occur it could be thought of a hybrid thought as a hybrid between act and rule utilitarianism, but it's also attempts to take an account how human beings actually function psychologically. The total utilitarianism, and I actually, I don't know, do I got that or do I got that on file? Yes, I got it on here. I want to read what this says. I got average on here too. I want to say total. It's a method of applying utilitarianism to a group to work out and what are the best sets of outcomes would be the problem, mere addition of the paradox. To survive a mere addition of the paradox with a consistent method of total utilitarianism. I mentioned that in a recent video and here we go. 
Total utilitarianism advocates the measuring the utility of the population based of the total utility of its members. However, it has been argued that this leads to a repugnant conclusion, which an enormous population whose individual lives are barely worth living inconsiderably, preferably to a smaller population with good lives. That is total utilitarianism. And what I just read earlier from my, my notes, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Average utilitarianism advocates of measuring the utility of population based on the average utility. That population that drawback here is known as the mere paradox. I, that, that also is average. It, there's an average and it does value the maximum, the heatings. Yeah. It's all work the same, similar to total. Okay. And then the drawback here is known as the mere paradox addition paradox where bringing moderately happy person into a very happy world would be seen as an immoral act or the logical implication that it would be a moral good to eliminate all people whose happiness is below a uh, below average as this would raise the average happiness. So moderately happy. Yeah, that's what average utilitarianism is. And then you got the negative utilitarianism requires us to promote the least amount of least amount of evil or harm or to prevent the greatest amount of suffering, but the greatest number as opposed to the general or positive utilitarian rule of the greatest of amount of the good for the greatest number. The justification of the negative utilitarianism is that the greatest harm are more consequential than the greatest good. So, so should have more influence on moral decision making. Critics have argued that the ultimate aim of negative utilitarianism would therefore logically to be engender the quickest and the least painful method of killing the entire humanity, as this would effectively mi uh, minimize suffering. Although more moderate proponents would were obviously not not the purpose of that, not purpose purpose of that. Okay. And then you got the sentient, the sentient, uh, utilitarianism states that well being of all sentient beings, consciously beings who feel pain, including therefore some non-human animals deserves equal consideration within that with, with that given the human beings when making moral decisions in utilitarian context. Yes, this is the utilitarianism, types of utilitarianism. We discussed the history of utilitarianism, the criticism of utilitarianism and the history of it and the introduction. This is the basics of philosophy of utilitarianism. And so with that, may y'all bless in the, in the Lord of Melchizedek. And I want to say is Shalom.